I mean, I certainly take away just how how much stress, how much anxiety I've seen in individuals over the last year or so. But what I think through all of that has really, really made me feel quite positive has been how people have come together and thought about what is the real purpose of business and leadership as we start to come out of this. There isn't going to be a single hero leader with all the answers. Um, this is a complex situation. It changes rapidly. It morphs into different uh, 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 contexts. It may technically be the same storm, but we're all in different boats. And so how could any one person have a, a single set of answers that covers all our different perspectives? So we really are beginning to see that we do need collaboration, the ability to ask good questions and listen, really, really listen to the answers. I think we're seeing lots of examples of where leadership that's more authentic, genuinely informed by your priorities, and um, you know has economics and empathy, which is more typical of female leadership patterns. Men who have that are doing better as well. So it's just to say we should be confident that uh, you know the skill set that female leaders bring, I think, will be particularly relevant as we continue to navigate what I think will still be quite choppy, choppy water. I think things like collaboration, broader inclusion of stakeholders, using technology as a way to work more flexibly, but still stay connected, um, deeper listening and empathy. But we also have to realize that leaders themselves, each of us, you know, are also in a, at a moment when you can very easily become hyper-stressed. You know, too much technology, too much input, too much information, not enough clarity. So you've got to make sure your own resilience and well-being is strong. But over the course of the next 12 months, I think we all have a particular challenge to face. And that is balancing the needs of the short term and urgent, the stuff that has to be done right now, while simultaneously starting to think about the medium and the long term. And I sometimes describe this as a need for a different kind of zooming ability from leaders. We need to be able to zoom in and solve something that has to be fixed right now. Uh, as we did in the first weeks and months uh, of the crisis. But we also need to be able to zoom out and consider the long-term uh, implications and how uh, uh, the scenarios might play out in the future. And we need to have a leadership style in any, every organization that completely brings together all the talent an organization has. I do, you know, I'm looking forward to a day where we don't have to talk about diversity and inclusion in the workplace because it's a given. I want to talk about, I don't want to talk about why we need the ethnicity pay gap, because it's a given that we do all these things properly. You know, we need to move to a much fairer workplace for all of society. And that's what future leaders need to do as we come out of this. Leaders today need to be thinking about what's really going to come. What's the positives? Are they, and are they ready? Are they really ready? Are they as tech enabled as they need to be? Have they decided what working practices they're going to kick people with or which ones they're going to completely ditch? That's what they all need to be doing. Because my view is now is that unless we get ready when things do open up in Britain and in our elsewhere, OK, it's those that have really thought through how they're going to open up, what they're really going to be and how they're going to work that I think are going to be the big winners. And so the combination of the technology that's available to us plus the fact that we just can't go back to the way we were before, just means this way of working thing for me is probably the biggest immediate thing. And for you to decide what is it that we as a family, I as a person, you and your heart and skill sets want to do, what model will work best for you? And in a way, find an employer in a context that works well with that. So here's just one thing that I am mentally trying to do. Um, and it's actually in response, uh, partly in response to one of the questions that was asked in the chat. I am building my own personal list of stuff that I am not going to do when we go back to normal. Uh, for example, um, long meetings, um, recruitment panels that uh, are entirely uh, 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 non-diverse, um, presentism, a sense of, oh, not in the office where we'll just carry on without them. Um, uh, so those are some of the things on my list. Let me issue a challenge to each of you. What's on your list 
not just stuff that you, you want to do, not stuff to add to your list, but stuff that you're consciously not going to do as we go into the next normal. <laughs>